Hello and welcome to Berwick Speedway's Total Access Show with myself Scott Frame and of course Greg Blair. On this week's show we'll recap uh, Saturday's narrow win over the Edinburgh Monarchs at Shieldfield Park and we'll look ahead to Friday's match against the Glasgow Tigers at Ashfield. Uh, but first of all Greg, uh, what can only be described as a roller coaster meeting against Edinburgh? You mentioned it when you were on the centre green, it's not often you see two sides being able to play, play attack sub <laughs> in the one meeting, um, but it was that type of night, it was just, it was crazy. Yeah, everything was just so, like, you didn't know what was happening the next heat, you know, usually in Speedway you can kind of like already sort of semi fill your programme in because you know what's going to happen. That was not the case tonight, it was just all out action um, and the fact that the, that the score was so close, yeah. it just made it such a fantastic night for uh, for both sides of the, uh, the fans. Of course, and it was actually Berwick that found themselves six points down first, and um, Daniel Hume pulled, pulled out of, of heat six for Rory Slime. Seems a bit harsh and Daniel doesn't it at the time. I thought, oh, that's a bit, so it's been a bit harsh there, but also it ends well. Uh, as I say, and Rory really, after what would be probably a kind of poor right for Rory, uh, hit back with a, a, a crucial heat win and a 5-1 at that point to get his back in the game. It was brilliant, wasn't it? I mean, that's why we've got Stuart Nixon here as yeah. team manager. That's why we're winning these meetings because, you know, he's doing things that he knows is going to work. They were working and, you know, at the end of the day, we got the win and, uh, you know, the riders did play their part in that, but you also have to take your hat off to Stuart for making that decision when, uh, when it was to do. And uh, yeah, it just everything seemed to work really well in, in amongst all the chaos. Absolutely, and credit to Daniel Hume because in his next ride in Heat 8, he came out uh, and got out in front, out the gate, uh, to get himself a race win, but undoubtedly, um, probably right of the night from my point of view, Bastian Bork, uh, past both Connor Coles and Lassa Fredrickson, uh, and what was quite an incredible ride. It was a brilliant ride. Uh, the thing is, I think every Bandits fan that was there tonight sort of was willing him over the line. So you know, when it was coming up to the coming up to the the, the checkered flag there, he really was giving it his all, and uh, it was so impressive to see. And it's something that you know, the fans do need that. We do, you know, it, it's easy for you to just make a gate and win, but that kind of entertainment when a rider's coming from the back and getting that second place—that's that's what we want to see. Absolutely, and I mentioned Daniel a couple of times here. Uh, we're going to hear for. For Berwick team manager Stuart Dixon now, who will tell us about that hard decision that he had to make and ultimately uh, the win over the Monarchs. Stuart, it was a win, a, bit, a win's a win in the end, but uh, Edinburgh kept us very honest and it was a strange meeting all in. Yeah, as you say, a win is a win. Uh, I, I know some people were saying, you know, we, we, could, we could get a bigger score tonight, you know, we could really press home our advantage. Uh, we need to not get carried away and think we're better than what we are. The, the most important thing, as I said, is to win our home matches. We've managed to do three out of three so far, but we are going to get challenges. You know, there's, there's very evenly matched teams in the league this year with that 38 point limit, you know, and tonight proved that uh, we got over the line. Um, I think it proves that there's, there's a bit of fighting spirit about this team, you know, and we won't just go rolling over when we find ourselves six points behind at any time, home or away. And uh, credit to the riders for, for getting us over the line and winning the meeting, yeah? Absolutely, and what we spoke about during the week about Edinburgh being solid through, that, mm -hmm. that proved to be true as well, didn't it? It certainly was. You see young Max James popping out and uh, winning Heat 2, you know, something. Mm -hmm. I know him obviously for the Leicester Cubs days, I know he can be a strong gator, what he can be doing. Probably. It shouldn't be happening in our home track, but you know, if it had been away from home, I'd have been pleased if our rider had done that. So, but as you say, they were solid. Um, I think Paco Castagna scored eight points tonight. You know, I think it's a decent return for him because I wouldn't say Shieldfield Park's one of his favourite tracks. But from my side, you know, we we some indifferent scores. You know, I mean, you know, but at the end of the night, you know, Jai Etheridge had, had probably the night. You know, that sometimes happens to riders. Nothing could go right. Freddie Hodder struggled, but. I wouldn't say he had a bad meeting, but he just struggled for points. But collectively, it's the seven totals of the riders. We got 47 points, and then that's enough to win the meeting. And it gives us another two points in the BSN trophy section, which was really what it's all about. Absolutely. After a, a kind of probably indifferent first ride, certainly not his rest, best ride by any stretch of imagination for, for Rory, uh, you've seen the bit was between the teeth, the, the, the rest of the meeting. Uh, to me, it was a more determined Rory that we've seen. I thought he looked the fastest rider on show tonight. I know Josh Pickering made the gate on him one time, but I thought Rory was really on his tail. Josh, very clever, he knew exactly where Rory was going to come from, but 
when you seen when Rory made the start heat 15, how much he won the race by. For, for me, that was the skipper's probably best performance of the season so far. We give mention to Richard Lawson for coming in and doing an excellent job and we send our best wishes to his replacement for who to replace tonight and Louis Kerr. So, but yep, I definitely uh, echo your sentiments about the, the skipper. Uh, I thought he was a class act tonight. And we've seen you, you made that change in heat six uh, when we were six points behind. Difficult decision for you, really, because Daniel, he's not exactly slow around here. Um, he's proven to be a vital member of the team so far. Did you feel that was a tough decision at, at the time, considering Rory had scored one point from his first ride as well? It was a tough call, there's no doubt about it. Um, but when I get a gut feeling about something, you know, I, I, I looked at the gates as well and I thought to myself, I've got to go with those two. I, I need to jump on it now. I thought the meeting was getting away from us. I felt that you know if we could get a 5-1, we'd get the momentum back in the pits. Um, as much as I can bark and shout all I want, you need the riders to buy into it. Sometimes if you're 8 or 10 behind, they'll say, you know, who's he kidding? It's not happening tonight. So important we've done it. Difficult for Daniel. I explained to him, we came out and finished with two race wins. Fantastic. Told him that he could be needed in Heat 15. We just didn't know. But Daniel... Obviously, he was upset, but he took it in the sporting manner. He, did. he understand it's a team. It's a team game. It's something I won't shy away from. It's something I'm not scared to do. I will do what's best for the team at all times. I said that to the riders when I first met them, press and practice. But uh, it wasn't ideal to take him out, which was only going to be his second race. But we got the result. We got the five one, and I suppose that takes the pressure off of me after making that sort of call. Absolutely, two big five ones then, because obviously in heat fifteen. Um, sorry. I'm going to take you back actually to, to kind of mid-meeting and it was a race where uh, the referee pulled it back. I'm sure it was Heat 6 from memory. Uh, no, in fact, it was Heat 5 uh, where Josh Pickering, um, basically there was a, a kind of a rerun for the start where Josh had maybe jumped slightly. Um, I seen in the pits, obviously, you were aggrieved at the fact that they had punished himself at that point. Um, but ultimately, we ended up punishing that because Josh had Pickering ended up jumping out the start and winning the rerun, which is so common in the sport, isn't it? Yeah, with, with the, the the rule, the ruling now is if the, it's an unsatisfactory start when a rider tries to jump, or what I say, cheat at the start, so I think it gave an advantage, you know, our riders will try it as well, not just Josh. Uh, the rule is now that it's got to be, it's got to be a rerun, which is which is different for Thursday night, Ty Wiffen then tried it at Leicester and heat four against Ryan Douglas and the referee let, let the race go. And that, it's the inconsistencies that I think that, that really can frustrate team managers. So I, I was straight on the phone, Mr McGregor rightly pointed out, you know, that the, the rule book is, 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 is back to all four. Start. But we were away in that race. And, and unfortunately for us, Josh made the, the gate in the rerun, but that happens in Speedway, you know. Absolutely. And just to fast forward to Heat 15, you must have been absolutely delighted with the gate that the guys made. And Richard Lawson, absolute hero to hold off Josh Pickering because Josh was going something to get past him. We, we, all, we were always going to pick one and three, uh, and we knew gate two was probably the worst gate, even though Paco made it in heat 14. Uh, so we knew that Josh Pickering would, would most probably go four, no disrespect to Sedgy, but uh, Josh was the, the man we had to stop. The plan was for Rory to go around the inside of the curb if he, if he never get clamped with Sedgy, and Richard Lawson, Two, two instructions was to was to run uh, Josh Pickering as high, wide, as handsome as he could. But we actually made a good gate on it, as you say. He rode a terrific four laps. I think in lap one, Josh Pickering almost got him, uh, coming off the fourth bend. But the two guys done really well, got us over the line, sent the fans home happy. And uh, I think the Morrocks, their camp, they'll, they'll be thinking that they can they can turn around the aggregate bonus point on that one. But for us, it's about winning matches at home, like I said, win our home meetings. And then we, we now know what's required when we go to Ashfield and Armadale in the next two consecutive Fridays. Uh, you mentioned that there, and just to kind of finish off, obviously Glasgow away on Friday, it'd be nice to see a lot of the Bandits fans up there because it's a massive meeting for us. We do take a lead up there and the, the bonus point is going to be crucial in this section as, we, as we've spoke about numerous occasions now. It is going to be, that's what I'm saying, we've got four points you know, on the table. Nobody can take that away from us now. That, that's the important thing. You know, Glasgow and Edinburgh now have got the, their jobs to do. We have done, win your two home meetings. It's, it's easier said than done. We, we'll rock up there on Friday night. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have a plan. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get in amongst them. We know it's going to be tough, but our riders have showed they're up for a fight, you know, this year. They, they're up for a, a fight. We're willing to, to challenge these teams. And um, there'll be a confidence about us going to these two away meetings the next two Fridays because we need to go there believing that we can get something out, one, if not both of those meetings. 
Good luck with that, Stuart. Thank you, New. Cheers. So Stuart Dixon there, as you said, um, that's what he gets paid for, Greg. He gets paid to make those big calls and big decisions. Ultimately, the choice of guests, the decisions made during the meeting between himself and the team, uh, ultimately won the day in the end. But it was a big 5-1 in the end from, from Rory and, and Richard Lawson. And being honest, watching the meeting, it just seemed as if Rory looked fast. It's just the... Josh, he was just getting out that gate just a bit quicker than him and can I just say he was quite incredible this evening, Josh Pickering as well, but it was a massive heat 15 and luckily the boys produced the goods. Yeah, they did and I spoke to Rory straight after heat 15 to congratulate him and it wasn't anything like a cheers or anything like that. He told me what he had done to the bike going out in heat 15 and I was like, wow, you know, it was a, it was a big risk. Like, you know, uh, without giving away setups for uh, for what he did. But um, it was a big risk at what he did, and uh, it completely turned everything upside down, you know. And that's the fact that we've got Rory Stein here, who's been around for a very long time. He's captain on his side. I mean, he's coming out with information like that, which he then relayed on to Freddie Hodder uh, after Heat 15. And Freddie says, Well, why did you do that? He says, It's an old trick, and it's, and, you know, it's something that does still work. Uh, in this day and age. So having that mixture in this team of uh, of old heads and youth and someone like Freddie who's taken all this up, information on board is vital. And uh, I just think that, you know, what a team that we actually have. Y you know, you were saying about, um, you know, we needed that Heat 15. Years gone by at Berwick, we've seen things where it's like it's slipped away from us and then the gap's gotten bigger. But actually to see Berwick fighting back and coming back at them, that's something that we're, uh, that we're chuffed to see. Absolutely, and I said to, you'll hear from Rory in a second, I'm just going to get your point of view on this uh, as well, Greg. We've we've been in positions uh, against Glasgow where we were leading the kind of majority of the meeting there. It was top, it was tight at the start, but ultimately we won the day in the end. Um, but really, this, was, this had to be a battling bandits performance again. But it's good to see that the team's got both sides of it. We can lead from the front, but we can also battle back from behind to win meetings. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, we can. We've shown it already. What we've done. We've only had three home meetings, and you know, we've went out and we've uh, we've won a meeting. Not you know easily, but we've done you know all the hard work to start off with, and then we've been able to coast from there. Then up against Glasgow, that was quite a tough meeting for us as well, but we still managed to to get the win there. And I think this one has been the most challenging meeting that we've had so far. Definitely. So there's a lot of uh, pointers to take from all three meetings so far. Uh, and now going on to the road, we can uh, work on that. And I think that having them meetings at the, at the start of the season is good because everybody knows what they need to do going forward. Absolutely, and we can hear from Captain Rory Schleim now. Rory, it was tight in the end. It was entertaining for the fans, but for the riders, it must have been nail-biting stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, I said uh, on track walk that the gate positions were going to swing around a little bit and we, we lost the toss and obviously they, they took the better positions uh, gate positions early on and then uh, then it swung around like it, it, it sort of made it did life hard for us to get you know the benefit from the gate position so um but look we, we dug deep uh we had some unlucky you know bat, um freddie broke down uh you know jai had an awkward crash so did bastion so look we we battled hard I, i'll look the result that's all that matters i hope bastion's all right hopefully everything comes back you know when he gets checked over at the hospital but um you know just a good battling performance from everyone Absolutely, and it's like that, it's been the silky bandits so far this season, but the battling bandits had to come out tonight, six points behind, six, six points in front, it was a it was a crazy meeting for that point of view. It was, and Edinburgh, you know, you, you look at their side, they're solid, and, and to be fair, Josh was, was he, he was on fire tonight, really, really fast, um, we, we'd struggled to keep pace with him uh, early on, and uh, had to make some some big changes for 8.15, and I think we did, we, we found a good setup in 8.15, and... Uh, yeah, it felt pretty good. So, um, you know, but as I said, mate, just the result, that's all that matters. Absolutely. And after your first race, I said this to Stuart when we were speaking, uh, you looked quite tentative on the bike first race, maybe, the, maybe just getting used to track conditions, but you definitely looked as if you had the bit between the, your teeth the rest yeah, of the, the it, meeting. Well, gate three just wasn't working. Yeah. And then when I found myself at the back, it was just sort of trying to keep out of the, the, the slurry because the, it was wet. And uh, um, just it, it was just the track was really awkward to ride because it was wet in places and grippy in others so it was trying to be smooth and uh to keep out of the roost so i think everyone struggled with that when they were behind in the first four races uh but it came good you know towards i'd say eight eight six eight seven it was it was racy and um uh you know and a lot of guys had to make changes i was changing things all night uh for, trying to find that extra bit and um 
But yeah, it was difficult. It was a difficult night, but again, we, we just battled hard. We dug in when, when we had to. You, you looked as if you were enjoying the pressure, obviously, Louis, that here we've got a guest in. Um, when you've put in a tactical ride, the Heat 15, all big heats this evening, all with a lot of pressure on it. You looked as if you were enjoying that kind of responsibility and pressure again. Did I look like it? <laughs> it to me, it uh, look, it, all I will say is that I think we had like the best guest we could get to get in to, to come in to replace Louis. Louis's been on fire for us. So um, Rich was, uh, he, he rode probably more teams than, than probably us as a Berwick bandit, says him. Um, so, you know, we got to thank him for that. And uh, But he's always good. He's always a good guest. He never lets anyone down when, when, he, when he guests. And, and he's always ridden well here. So, um, but yeah, he, did, he 15, we were just trying to figure out what was what was the best option to go in that first corner. And and uh, I look back a couple of times, I can see he was batting with Josh and I didn't want to get into that frame of mind where if I start slowing up to hinder him. So, um, but yeah, no, huge thanks to him because if, without him, we wouldn't have got that advantage. And, uh, uh, yeah, just just glad we, we we're, we're top of the table, I guess, in 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 the BSN. So we just go to the away ones now. Absolutely, and there's not a home meeting until the twenty seventh uh, of April. Now we go to Glasgow and Edinburgh back to back each Friday. Uh, obviously, as I say, Glasgow this Friday. It's going to be a tough one, but we do take a lead there, and it's something to kind of defend, so to speak. It is. I, I think we know Glasgow is a tough outfit. Um, I, I think. With what we've got now, with the injuries, Stuart's obviously going to have to have a look what, who's available, what we can use. You never know. Hopefully, maybe Rich is available because he, he rides. He's former Glasgow rider as well, so that would make sense. Um, and uh, you know, depending on what's up with Bash, and that that will change the outlook of what what Stuart wants to do um, down at reserve. So you know, some some thinking in the background needs to be done. And uh, look, I think we just go there with an open mind. Like we won at home, that's good. And I just think we go there with an open mind and just do what we can. Thanks very much, Rory. Cheers. So Rory there, Greg, obviously had a fantastic night. Um, he did say, and I, when I put it to him, that after he's frustrated, maybe a bit slow, he's saying we had to work out the track, but got his back between the teeth. And that's what we're going to need going into the fixtures, uh, uh, our next two BSN fixtures at Glasgow and Edinburgh coming up. Glasgow, first off, not had a lot of home, home meetings, which I think is going to be, which could work in our favour possibly, but they've got a lot of experience in that team as well, which I think obviously is a, a, a plus point for them. So what I'm trying to say is, it's going to be a tight meeting. It is, and that's the thing. We do like tight meetings. At the end of the day, I know it would be nice if Berwick were going out there and just winning all the time, but meetings like that we've had, uh, they've been brilliant. It's been close, it's been good fun, the entertainment's good, and you can really feel the buzz with the crowd as well. And uh, hopefully we see many travelling fans going up there uh, to watch that meeting. But, you know, like you say, Glasgow, they've not had that many meetings, uh, well, at all. Um, you know, they've had half a meeting uh, so far. So we could maybe use that to our advantage, you know, because we've got more of a, a team that's gelled together. Uh, you know, they, they, they've, they've had these meetings where they've all sort of, they know what each other's doing and they know how everything's going and I think that's going to make things better for us. Obviously, there was a few negatives to take away from the meeting in terms of injuries tonight, Greg. Um, just seems to be a, a couple of nights of kind of bad luck for some of our guys in terms of uh, Louis obviously breaking his ankle at Oxford. We wish Louis well. Uh, hopefully, we see him back in the bike sooner rather than later. Um, but tonight, we've seen Jai... Uh, Catching a bit of the fence, I think he said to me after the meeting, um, and it basically dragged them in and he fell awkward playing. And obviously, the massive crash involving Paco Castagna and uh, Bastian Bob. Bastian thinks going to the hospital now to get checked out to make sure everything's okay. Um, but fingers crossed, those guys are going to be full gas, ready to go Friday. Yeah, that's it, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Bastian, he went down really hard. I was very close to it uh, when it happened there on the first corner. And he did hit the track quite hard, and it's a you know it's unforgiving thing that when you hit yeah. that. So the thing is, you know, we, we hope that they they've got a bit of recovery time coming up, and uh, we just have to cross our fingers that these guys are uh, are going to be okay. You know, <laughs> Jai knows unfortunately what it's like to crash around this place. Yeah. He's done it a few times, and he seemed to be a little bit you know all right afterwards. Uh, but you know, it's always the next day that it always catches up with you once that adrenaline starts to run off. Exactly. And of course, as you can tell, um, this is released on the Thursday before the, the Glasgow match, but as you can tell, we are recording directly after the Edinburgh Monarchs match, so you might be privy to a wee bit more information than what we are at the time of recording. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the past at the we're moment. We're in the past, and you're in the future. 
Um, until next week, as we, sorry, just one bit of information. Uh, sorry, our next home meeting won't be until the 27th of April with the opponent yet to be confirmed, most likely to be in the KO Cup against either Scunthorpe or Plymouth. Scunthorpe taking a massive lead uh, into the second leg in that one. So we will know our opponent just shortly uh, to see who we'll be racing against on the 27th of April. Uh, until next week's Total Access show, uh, that's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. <laughs> What? <laughs>